The Power 40 podcast is an uplifting faith-based podcast that speaks to all that is going on in our world. Our goal is to share inspirational real-life stories and experiences from notable guests around the country on matters that touch us all. The number 40 symbolizes a period of testing, trial, or probation. We all experience trying times in our lives, but it's what comes from these times that make us who we are. As we depict periods of people's lives where 40 has played out, we learn the goodness that comes from perseverance, determination, and belief. I'm your host, Danica Tramberg, joined by co-host today, Adriana Mendez. Hi, I'm so excited to be here today. I work for Channel 4 here in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and it's just so important to highlight these positive stories and highlight people who are just so inspirational, and I'm so excited to be a part of this podcast here today. Thank you, Adriana. And today we sit down with um, an individual who has an amazing story that truly fits all that the Power 40 podcast is. Brock was once told he had just a 1% chance of walking again after a 2007 car crash that killed his father and his brother's girlfriend. And Brock, we're just so glad you're here with us today. Thank you for having me. I'm really excited to be here. And uh, certainly, I think that this podcast hits home with a lot of people going through the times we're in right now. So I'm happy to be a part of it. Well, we so appreciate it. And your story has been told in front of sellout crowds at Michigan Stadium and on television screens around the country. Can you share with us just a glimpse of your story with our listeners? Sure, I have done this a lot in the last, in the last year I haven't done it very much, unfortunately, but um, it's been, it's, it's so hard to even remember that it's been, gosh, 13 years now, uh, December of 2007 that my family was in a car crash. Uh, At the time, my brother Elliot was a senior in high school and was just about to uh, play football for the University of Michigan. And on this journey home at around nine o'clock on Christmas Eve, we ended up uh, having a man run a a stop sign, hit our car. Uh, I had had blacked out for some period of time when that happened, Uh, but I was uh, pulled from pulled from the car from the with the jaws of life and uh, transported to an emergency room uh, and told that I had a spinal cord injury. I actually went into surgery for just over eight hours, uh, which I had never had a surgery before this. And uh, when I woke up, it, it took about five seconds in my mind. And then uh, when I woke up, that's when the doctor had told me I would likely never walk again. And then I'd have a very, very difficult life ahead of me. Yeah, that's, I can't even imagine getting that news and your world literally just flipped upside down in the blink of an eye. How did you find the strength to just keep pushing forward in that moment? It was a, it was an immense challenge. Like I said, I'd never had a surgery. I'd had a very, uh, what I would say, uh, typical life and, and did not expect this to happen to me. I was, I was actually just about to graduate myself from college and, and so, as you said, it turned my life upside down and all of those things that I had planned basically went by the wayside for that, that moment. And uh, I will say that the eight days, I, uh, seven or eight days I spent at Toledo Hospital following my surgery were uh, certainly the hardest, not only because of the physical pain, I was on a lot of different painkillers and things like that, but uh, the emotional pain as well as the physical pain. Uh, my father's funeral happened while I was at the hospital. That was probably the most difficult because my family and so many of my friends had to be at the funeral and I couldn't be there. And And I had to deal with a lot of this. I, I had a lot of support, but there was so much that I had to deal with on my own. And it gave me basically this period of time and prayer. And I will say a lot of the time uh, was not... I was not a positive person. I wasn't a really happy person in that moment, even though I had been throughout my life, very positive, optimistic, um, joyful person. But in those moments, I certainly wasn't. Uh, I was angry. I was bitter. I had a lot of the questions that come in our heads when we go through difficult periods of life. And uh, the big one being, where are you, God? Like, why would you let this happen to me? And, you know, I do, as I talk through this, you know, there's so many times that I look back on that because 
even though I was asking that question, now that I look back in hindsight, I see all these little moments that, that God had revealed himself and was showing me those things, but I was too focused on all that pain I was feeling at the time. And, and, and now I do see the times that I was comforted. And, and from that, from that week that I spent at the hospital, I got transferred to Michigan, which was my next big goal was to actually have something outside of the hospital room to, to go and do. Um, I didn't, I didn't know at the time that it was, it was going to make things even harder. Um, I was really grateful. I didn't feel as much physical pain, but I would go to physical therapy or occupational therapy. And then I kind of found out, you know, how difficult life could be. But I, as I said, I did have a lot of support, a lot of people that came to see me. Uh, a lot of times I fell asleep while they were there visiting and, uh, and, you know, I, I was comforted in that way. And so that support system really helped me. But I also feel like those conversations with God were, were extremely helpful in getting me through it. Yeah, I do you, feel like faith plays such an important role in getting through hard times like that. Yeah, and Brock, you talked about some of those moments where God revealed himself to you when you were in, you know, just the darkest time of your life. What could you elaborate a little bit on those moments where you you noticed God was there even through this immense struggle that you were going through? Yeah, but, I mean, a lot of the time I feel like it was through people. And even if people didn't, didn't come there saying that, oh, I prayed about this and God wanted me to be here. I think there were a lot that did, but there were also a lot of people that didn't have that same thought process going in. They just wanted to be there for me. And so it wasn't until later that I really went back to them to really tell them, you know, how much those moments went to, uh, how much they meant to me. But I will say that uh, those people that, that came and just, and just spent that time with me, uh, those were moments where I kind of, I felt a lot stronger and I felt like I was a lot more myself, so to speak. And, and it just gave me these brief glimpses of, of feeling that I wasn't alone and, and not in the sense of having that person there, but in the sense that I'm not being, you know, left behind or this isn't going to be, you know, what my life's going to hold for me. Um, but there were also moments at night just completely by myself, which unfortunately or fortunately I couldn't sleep almost any night. I spent about three months in the hospital, got very little sleep, but in those moments by myself in the middle of the night praying, those were moments that I really felt the closest to God. And like I said, they were the hardest moments, but they were, you know, just these moments of quiet that I could really have those conversations and, and get those feelings out. And, and every morning I just pressed myself to, to try a little more and, and do a little better. And uh, there's so many other moments I could talk about in my life where God really revealed himself, but um you know, in, in the hospital, they weren't these really noticeable moments like uh, something miraculous happening. They were just such small moments of um, even where I, you know, maybe didn't feel sick for a period of time was this huge blessing. And it's it's really hard to, uh, you know, consider that. But it was it was like just having those moments of peace and those moments where I wasn't feeling immense pain felt like a really big comfort. And I will say that. Um, you know, I think for a lot of us, you know, you get in the stresses of life and then you you miss out on those small moments or maybe you have to come like I did. I had to kind of look back later and, and re realize how grateful I was to have them. Yeah, you definitely need um, that faith, I feel like, to overcome something like you have. And hearing that when you're in the hospital, just, you know, that one percent chance to walk again. I mean, I, I can't even fathom, you know, hearing those words for myself. But you had a huge goal to walk down the aisle at your wedding and and to walk, even with that 1% chance. Um, that definitely had to have taken faith on your part and lots of perseverance to get to where you are today. Can you just walk us through that process? How, how did that look like? What was what were you feeling in that time? Well, it was uh, it wasn't. I mean, as I said, the surgeon told me it's likely I'd never walk again. She she said everybody wants a number and she said 1% would be extremely optimistic to say you have a 1% chance even of walking. But, um, but probably, I guess, <laughs> probably the biggest 
kind of miraculous kind of God moment was uh, meeting my brother Elliot, who of course went on to be uh, played for five years at the University of Michigan as a center. Uh, but when I met his strength coach, and again, I guess in the moment of meeting him, I didn't think it was anything out of the ordinary other than uh, other than him, uh, you know, having these people come visit me. It wasn't anything out of the ordinary, although he did he did really spark this um, fire, I would say that, hey, we'll get you up and walking again. And a lot of other people, including my physical therapist, didn't believe that. But I basically, uh, you know, you talk about faith, but that was a moment where I truly had to rely on faith because every step of that way was more and more uh, unbelievable. Um, it was more and more uh, impossible to achieve where Mike would tell me what we were going to do for the day. And it would always be something I hadn't done before. I mean, every single day, which is really hard to it's hard for someone, I think, to relate to that. But every single day, it was something I've never done before, at least considering my during my time during the accident. And I had to try and do this impossible thing uh, each time. And Mike never let me leave the gym without having done whatever that was. And in some way, um, in some way, we would we would make it happen. But I would say, Every day I had to pray about it, and that's not something I had typically done prior to the accident, but every day I would pray about it and just say, you know, please let me be on, let me be on the right path or what you want me to do, God, and and in some way we'd find to to actually overcome that and 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 reach whatever that goal was. And I would say in addition um, to praying about it, we'd pray at the gym. Um, we would, and, and Mike, that was kind of his go-to was, I can't really do anything for you, you know, as a human, but, but we're going to do everything possible to show God that we're, that we believe that this is going to happen. And then we would go out and do that. So it was, it was really incredible. <laughs> was there like a moment that kind of switch the mindset, switch the thinking for you? Because you'd mentioned at first you were, you know, just make maybe a little angry, rightfully so, at everything that was going on. Was there a moment after you heard the doctor's prognosis like that you would never walk again? Was there a moment where you decided, no, this is what you say, but this is what I believe, and this is what I know I can achieve, and this is what I'm going to work for? So was there that moment where the mentality kind of switched for you? And you were determined to kind of prove them wrong, or was it just a gradual you know, thing for you? Yeah, I would say it was... It was it was a, it was definitely a, a journey or process to get to that point. I mean, I did initially say, I, I, I don't even remember what else the surgeon said, because at that moment I just said, no, that's not. And I guess that's the denial phase that, that people go through with any trauma. But I said, no, that's, that's not going to be the way my life looks because she had gone into needing to use a wheelchair and even to the extent of possibly needing to have assistance the rest of my life to do the things I wanted to do. I, I also had a broken right arm, which made things that much more difficult at the time. But, you know, I knew that that would be a temporary uh, injury. But, uh, but anyways, I, I went through that process where I had felt immense pain in my legs. And so I wanted to believe that that would change. And it did change, but it went away. And I think that was just about uh, a couple of weeks after the accident, I got to the point where I didn't feel anything at all, which was not what I wanted. Uh, that wasn't the change I wanted. And of course, when that happened, you know, things, it really tested my faith a lot because it, I, it, it's almost impossible to describe what that's like because my legs became dead weight. Not only could I not feel them, but they were dead weight. So anytime I moved, I'd have to bring them with me and it made it really set in that this is, you know, my life now. And, and even in those first couple of weeks, I couldn't even sit up on my own. Like I had to have a nurse holding my shoulders and, and help push. I couldn't do a sit up even because a lot of my abdominal muscles had been paralyzed too. And, and so it really set in, if, if it's this hard to sit up, how in the world could I stand up, let alone, you know, take another step. And so, so it, it did, it, it really, 
shook me to my core to think this could be what my life is like. And I would say, you know, one of those moments certainly was meeting Mike Barwes, my brother's strength coach that said, wow, like this guy, he believes more than I do that, that I can walk again. And, you know, beside, beside his training with the human body and, and training athletes, you know, he didn't certainly didn't know more than doctor or anything like that. But what he did know more of, I guess, was the faith side of things that, that anything is possible. And, and I just really clung to that. And so along the way, um, I would say it wasn't until I met Mike that I really, really got to that point where I was 100% invested and in saying, no, I'm not going to be in this wheelchair because um, I had used the hospital chair, then I got my own wheelchair and, and things, you know, just started going that direction. Like this really could be what my life is. And, and it wasn't until Mike really told me that that, you know, life didn't have to be miserable. It wasn't a choice between being miserable and walking. It was really, you know, just a set of choices. And I knew either way, you know, life was going to be more challenging perhaps, but, but that I could make my own path. That's where I really, it took the pressure off, I guess. I, I talk a lot about how I had started to tell people, um, including being on ESPN and saying, I'm going to walk again. And then thinking to myself, wow, what if I don't, you know, what will people ask me, Hey, I thought you were going to walk and you, you know, now you don't. And, and that was scary, you know, it was a scary thing, but, um, but I was a hundred percent invested. And then I, and then I started swinging the other way where um, things really started going my way. I had a lot of progress. I was blessed in a lot of ways, but that just reinforced something that I had wanted to believe for so long. Yeah, totally. And I mean, looking at where you are now and, you know, back when all this happened to you and you kind of mentioned before, like, why me? Like, like, what is the purpose? Why do bad things happen to good people kind of thing? Looking back at it now, what do you kind of feel that purpose was, or do you feel you learned something from it or, you know, where has your life taken you now because of everything you've been through? And one of the prayers that I often had was that God would make my life into something purposeful and something meaningful because way deep down, that if, if life we could see and what, uh, what's here on earth, then something like this happening would be bad and it would just always be bad. There'd be nothing good that could come from it. It would just be awful. And so I would pray about that a lot. And, and God has certainly shown me purpose. I think one of the many stories that I love is, is, kind of this situation where I talked to Mike Barwis about, you know, how am I going to repay him for helping me out? Because I spent, um, at one time his, uh, one of his right hand men, uh, he told me, Hey, you owe $36,000 for your training because you spent eight hours a day for, I don't know how many days it was, but it was some crazy number. And we both kind of laughed, but, but I would ask Mike, like, how am I ever going to repay you for all this? Just giving him, you know, your time basically for free. And he always just told me that I had my own gift and that I would have to just share that openly and, and I could consider it repaid. And it was just kind of a cool thing, but it also confused me because I'm like, I'm in a wheelchair with a broken arm, you know, what do I have to offer? And, and it was kind of a funny thing because it was like, oh, you have to find out for yourself. You know, it's almost like mm -hmm. a, a children's <laughs> movie, but, um, but I certainly have, I mean, I have, I've met so many people that are going through not only, you know, an injury or disability, but all kinds of things that we go through in life. And, and it's really opened my eyes and humbled me in a lot of ways to have people reach out to me. And, 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 and again, I, I sometimes feel a um, responsibility to, to help assist them, but really I've felt it's just really just being present and being open to, to, connecting with them in that way. I think that's something that people really uh, want to find. And, and I guess that's kind of been my way of helping people. Um, I've gotten very involved in a lot of uh, nonprofit organizations, including my local hospital here, which has been really cool. I'm on the board at the Fulton County Health Center in my hometown. And it's been an awesome way to give back. But, um, but I mean, really to the center of it all, as far as purpose, 
uh, you know, I, I still, I still truly feel, I mean, that God would never have wanted the situation to happen, but, but for it to happen and, you know, on earth and, and, uh, just people, you know, making their own decisions and having free freedom to, to, you know, have actions, I guess that for him to turn this around into what it has become is, has really empowered me to to press forward as far as his faith, because I feel like a lot of people look at my story and think, um, on one hand, I was very lucky to, uh, you know, have a brother playing college sports, but I was more lucky to have him have a coach that just took me in and wanted to work with me like he did. And, and then on the other, on the other hand, I worked extremely hard, you know, and, and there's been a lot of videos about it, but I know, really only Elliot and his teammates know the amount of work I put in because a lot of times I watch that and I just am amazed because I think, wow, who is this guy that, that did this? Because it was, uh, I would say probably a lot like boot camp, but I was also at the weakest point in my life, paralyzed from the waist down, uh, just getting over my broken arm. And, and then I was able to go through what I went through and get to the other side. But uh, but what I know is that I didn't do that just because I'm a strong guy. I mean, I, I wasn't a D1 athlete or anything, <laughs> you know, it was, uh, that's, that's where I really had to dig down deep and, and all those prayers that people gave me and all the, the prayers I had for God to make me stronger and to, to pull through those things. Um, that's really where I give that credit. And I do feel like that's been the real purpose of it is, is to take a life that, you know, was almost ended in my case and and for me to to have purpose and to um hopefully glorify god in that yeah that's it's just so just you know inspiring to just see how you have found you know a purpose and you're highlighting your faith and inspiring others um i know there's probably people a lot of people waking up and realizing that maybe today is one of the worst days of the, their lives. What do you say to them to just keep that faith and keep pushing forward and keep moving on and just, and you know, just no matter how hard times get, just to remember your faith and just try to find maybe a little bit of positivity in, in whatever you're going through. What do you say to those people who are waking up on realizing today's maybe the worst day of their lives? Well, I, I would tell them, uh, similar as I said before, is is the prayer, the time that I made for prayer was super important. I I truly believe that you know, and not and not that we are uh, asking God constantly for what we want to be done in our lives, but that I really feel like it it just connects us closer to God, so that when we're done praying, we we go on from life. And and for me, uh, it made me a heck of a lot more optimistic and and happier about life, even though there were so many things to be angry about. Uh, but I would also say that, you know, I was surrounded by incredible people. And I think that every one of us, we have those people around us, but a lot of times it's, it's a lot easier to, to um, kind of retreat to solitude or, or be with the wrong people than it is to, to you know, to be with the, the right people that want the best for us. And in my case, with it being Mike Barwis, um, you know, he wasn't always super nice to me as nice, as nice as he was, you know, he was the one that pushed me the most. And, and, um, and another thing I will add too, is he, he definitely kept me accountable. I think a lot of times that bad things, like you said, they happen to good people. And even in my case, I, I had to consider, you know, what did I do wrong and what mistakes did I make? And, um, and I don't think, uh, God wants that for us to say that, like that to, to have us convince ourselves that we deserve those bad things. And so it, it becomes most important to be positive when, when those bad things happen. And so I would just uh, encourage those people to, to reach out, you know, to the people in their lives and, 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 and stay positive no matter what, because that is um, as much of a cliche as it is. Uh, it really is a marathon and it's, and perseverance goes so far in life. Uh, towards whatever goal we have. I really hope that whoever is waking up today and maybe it's the worst day of their life, maybe it's just a bad day, here's your message of hope and inspiration and encourage and, and perseverance. I think that's truly what it comes down to. 
And as we close out today and reflect on the power of 40 in our lives, maybe trials that we're going through or overcome, and we understand that in life, we'll continue to experience the good and bad that life throws our way. 40 also seems to be significant in regards to time. Jesus spent 40 days fasting in the wilderness, being tempted by the devil. The great flood lasted 40 days and 40 nights. The Jewish people wandered the desert for 40 years. And Brock, if you had just 40 minutes to impact the world, where would you start and what would you say? Ooh, that's a good, uh, good question. Um, <laughs> you know, I've been a lot of places and like I said, I haven't, I haven't been in the last year, but I think that, uh, you know, being online is, is certainly a great place to start. Um, uh, I, I've, I've really just tried to go wherever God leads me and he has taken me some incredible places. It just, uh, astounds me the places that I've been able to go, um, but I would say I, I really would start wherever I can have the most impact and and reach the most people. And I guess that's why I'd say, you know, as much as I've enjoyed being in class on Zoom, I just graduated from Michigan with my MBA actually last weekend. So Congrats. <laughs> congratulations. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Um, but I mean, rather than, uh, you know, give the uh, um I guess political answer, I would say I really do want to spend more of my time in Florida, where uh, Mike Barros has moved to. Um, we have a First Step Foundation that basically originated through my training with Mike to give other people that same opportunity to work out with world class athletes and equipment. And and that's the place that I that really want to once I'm able to get out there, um, spend more time there with people that are going through uh, similar disabilities that I dealt with and injuries, um, any types of paralysis. And I just, I haven't found anything as rewarding as really connecting with people in that way and, and helping them in their journey because it, it just, uh, like I said, it, it humbles me in a way, but it also just encourages me so much to be able to be there for them and know what they're going through. And I think every single one of us, you know, you don't have to have uh, a story quite like mine where all these have these unique stories, but every one of us has these talents and experiences that allow us to fill this special role that God has for us. And so I'd encourage everyone to, to find what that is and, and then just go do it. You know, there's so many times we talk ourselves out of it because we can't, you know, we, we don't have the resources or we don't know the right people, but it just, you just have to start. And, and that's certainly how I, I got through on my journey is taking that first step. And I realized if I could just do a step one time, Mike always told me there's nothing you can't do again and again after you've done it once. And so I would just encourage everyone to take that first step towards helping yourself and helping others. I think that the best way to help ourselves is to help others. So that's what I would encourage them to do. I love it. That's a great message. And I think everyone can can use that message to um, take into their life and use for themselves. It was wonderful having you on today, Brock. And thank you, Adriana, as well, for hosting with me today. Of course, this is so amazing. Brock, yeah, your story is so incredible and so inspiring. And I can't wait to see what you accomplish next and how you continue to inspire people out there. Thank you both so much. I mean, it really is an honor to be on here. So hopefully we'll see you again soon. Absolutely. And for more information on the Power 40 podcast, visit powerofhumans.com. Also stream the podcast on your preferred streaming service. 